definitely believe like, you know, health and living your life are so connected, but I feel like many people have them separate. Like you can fit, you know, treats and desserts into your diet, whether you are trying to like put on like lean muscle or try to lose weight. Basic movements are building your foundation of your body. You know, without those, it's hard to build upon that. Hey, welcome to the Heightened Living Podcast. I'm here with Trent McCloskey from TrentMcCloskey.com. Trent, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, Austin? Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, basically, you said it all. I'm a health and fitness blogger. I do some online coaching at TrentMcCloskey.com. Um, definitely like posting health and fitness topics on Instagram and other social media stuff. You know, Austin and I have been, you know, good friends now for, what has it been, like almost three years? Yeah. Gig. Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's been crazy just, uh, you know, what we've been through, you know, learning marketing, diving into more and more health and fitness stuff on, along the way, and uh, probably can consider myself, like Austin does too, like a lifetime learner of many things, many skills. Um, this me personally, I'm super passionate about health and fitness and trying to, you know, figure out like, how can we, you know, live the best life, you know what I mean? Because what this podcast is going to be about is health and fitness and how it relates to a heightened lifestyle. Yeah. And uh I don't want to take away your whole intro. Oh, no, uh, bro, you're good. You're good. Yeah, because yeah. definitely believe like, you know, health and living your life are so connected, but I feel like many people have them separate. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, people focus on the health, wealth, social, spiritual, those different things, and they like to keep them separate. And that's a lot of times what people are missing when it comes to like the overall well-being and and experience of what life is Mm -hmm. so that's where your viewpoint on health comes in and everything about how you think about that aspect of health right exactly because everything's like literally connected and like if your health and your physical condition isn't in good shape that impacts your work you know your focus at work uh your mood your day by day um even affects like your drive for goals um your sex drive and your physical attraction to others and your motivation to do things like everything's all connected. And I feel like uh, people almost feel that you have to like almost jump into like this whole health and fitness click or like Mm -hmm. you have to go to the gym five or six days a week and do like these, you know, intense workouts or eat like these bland meals and meal prep and all that stuff. And I feel like that may turn a lot of people away from just integrating these enjoyable habits within their life. So every other area of their life starts to improve whenever their health improves. Yeah. Yeah. There are no isolated systems and you're referring to that cult mentality, the Mm -hmm. bodybuilders and the like fitness gym rats, all those fitness junkies that are like, Oh bro, you don't, you don't bench like what the hell? And it's like, come on, man. There's so many like, yes, bench pressing can make your chest look good, but there's so many other things in life. You don't have to just be bench pressing every day or like, set up your Monday around your bench pressing routine. Right, exactly. And I think that's, I definitely, whenever I first got started in the fitness, like years ago, like even before I like knew you, like obviously, and a lot of people can relate of having like those vanity goals of like, oh, I want a bigger chest. I want a bigger bicep. Like I, I wanted to not be skinny anymore. And I think those goals are perfectly fine. But I think lately, it's not even about just like lifting weights. It's like, I know some of our favorite like pastimes are like doing yoga or more mm-hmm. like movement stuff. And even if someone is interested in like getting more into like health and fitness stuff, like even just doing like yoga and moving your body more and just getting more active, yeah. that's a perfect way that you'll start already noticing. Like I think you have some other episodes or uh, blog posts around like breathing, you know, yeah. like you're even like focusing more on your breath. It starts to change like every other part of your life. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And those are those high leverage skills, but you brought up movement. So Trent has a killer uh, lizard walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's been you've been practicing movement now for what a year, probably around that. Almost coming up on a year. I think you you were always like six or seven, eight months ahead. I mean, no, actually, you were doing that stuff and had me doing like more like Edo Portal kind of locomotion flows. Like yeah. back whenever we first moved down to Florida, and I was like, "What is Austin doing it for?" Like it was so strange. And then I put it off, and then like kind of you got back into it, and then I got into it. But yeah, it's almost coming like up on a year now. Yeah, one of the best parts of movement is the ability to look like the strangest person doing the coolest exercises at the gym. (laughs) Oh, exactly. But it has so many benefits too, because it's like, um, 
we all got pretty strong, like lifting weights. And mm -hmm. uh, I started like to hurt my shoulder and stuff like that too, like that. And that's what turned me on to movement because like just moving the body in so many different ways and loosening the muscles and, you know, just like lifting the same, lifting weights in the same pattern over and yeah. over again, you start to build up the calcium deposits in the muscles. And then you're not, your your body is more susceptible to injury. I think if you're only moving it in one way, um, that's why this whole philosophy on movement is so important for health. Um, but again, coming back to like with people, they may not have to like go crazy and dive into all that movement stuff or dive into weight. I think it's like finding that smallest thing to get the ball rolling. Like even if it's uh, more on like the nutrition side of like yeah. someone's looking to like lose weight or something. You know, if they can start tracking the calories of maybe like one meal per day or something like that, just something so they start to have more of an idea of like what they're eating or what kinds of food they're eating can start to get the ball rolling. And then like, okay, now I know like how to build up my nutrition to affect like my energy and everything like that. Or um, if it's more on like the fitness side of things. Totally, too. yeah, yeah. yeah even if it's like stretching a little bit, it's like, there's so many things you can start doing that you already start to notice like a little like improvement in your day to day life and stuff. Yeah. So we, we kind of just touched on movement, which is one of the parts in the section of body on height and living. And then, so when you're talking about diet and stuff, you were going a little bit into, we covered breathing for a second. You talked about how it can go and transfer into all the other aspects of like fitness. But when you're talking about, um, more of the health, which would be like either the daily lifestyle things that are going on or the nutrition advice. Like, what do you normally follow? Like, how do you do that? I know it's more of like the Ray Pete style mm -hmm. with more of an integrated, like holistic viewpoint of it. But I just wanted you to jump into cool. that real quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, I think first for starters, I got Joe Stana right here. It's probably like our favorite water. Uh, oh, yeah. probably like, probably like one of the best tasting sparkling waters. I wish we were like sponsored by this or whatever. But <laughs> Great tasting, you know, it has all like some really awesome minerals in it. And I think it has like what your daily serving of lithium. Yeah. Like, something like that. And uh, yeah, definitely hydration. I have like one of these a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheryl is uh, awesome for micronutrients. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, it's definitely um, nutrition. I must view that as like what you're eating. I think I don't want to dive into like the list of like good foods and bad yeah. foods. I know like in the fitness space, like that runs rampant of like, Oh, don't eat, eat this or eat that. But it's almost like how, how's your body going to perform the best? And like, how do you feel amazing? Like, you know, how do you eat to get clear skin or how do you eat to, you know, improve your digestion? So you like, you're not having stomach problems and all that stuff like that. And, um, definitely eating in a way that you're going to have those high energy levels. And, you know, that's also support your sleep. Um, did you want to like dive into like the specifics of like, you know, like a day to day kind of thing? Um, we could, you could yeah. just basically, I mean, I would say outline it. Like how does a typical day of Trent McCloskey eating look like? Yeah. Typical day. I think lately, um, definitely a lot of bone broth. Like in the morning, I enjoy like bone broth, uh, lots of fruit and fruit juice uh, throughout the morning. And then a lunch will probably be like a smaller lunch, um, some kind of protein like chicken or steak. Um, you, you big anything, salad. Crunchy? anything crunchy? Crunchy? Yeah. Crunchy what? Do you eat anything crunchy? I mean, oh, you have to. And uh, favorite is the uh, the, bol the boulder. It's like a thing. Like if you don't have anything crunchy within the day, like yeah. your day just feels off. It's one of my pet peeves, I have to have something crunchy. It's the texture and I don't know what it is, but it's something about that in life. <laughs> exactly which um yes the um those uh boulder chips those potato chips that are just like sea salt coconut oil and potato chips um no additives nothing like that because it also can impact your health a lot more than people would oh, think yeah. um so that's related to the nutrition philosophy uh but yeah it's usually like something small like that like chips um some kind of like you know protein dish or something like that or uh and there's a lot more of like fruits and um fruit juice but then like i'll usually save room for a bigger meal at night um, definitely, you know, have a glass of wine in moderation. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, usually Austin knows that I'm pretty like, I was very green back in the day. Usually just like steak and potatoes, but mm -hmm. some of my still favorite meals are like steak and potatoes, but I definitely oh, yeah. branched out a lot then. And, oh, um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and then I always still believe like you can fit, you know, treats and desserts into your diet, whether you are trying to like put on like lean muscle or try to lose weight. Um, whenever you start restricting foods uh, like from your diet, that's whenever things become tricky and then you're almost like fighting against something. So mm -hmm. I, my favorite is like Haagen-Dazs ice cream, again, because of that doesn't have like any of the gums, no additives, nothing like that. 
and uh, just it tastes great too, <laughs> you know. But oh, hi, ice cream awesome. almost like every single night and uh, stuff like that too. I was almost thinking like it's a funny thing. Excuse me a minute. Yeah, yeah. you're mm -hmm. good. Man. Some water. It was like um, I was almost gonna make a post on this because Hagen Dazs is literally like egg yolks, cane sugar, the cream, and yeah. um, I think that's it. Maybe like a little vanilla. But it, yeah. that's almost yeah, depending like depending on the flavor. Yeah, exactly. That's almost what someone would eat for breakfast. Like they would put yeah. cream, cream and sugar in their coffee and they would maybe have eggs for breakfast. So it's almost like it, <laughs> that, that really like takes away of like a good food and bad food kind of thing because yeah. I was really in the morning, I was going to like tag it or something like with the 7 a.m. kind of thing I'm eating haagen -Dazs. It's like, oh, for breakfast, I'll have eggs and, yeah. uh, you know, I put coffee or sugar and cream in my coffee. It's like the same thing. Um, yeah. It's funny the timing, how people are like breakfast, we eat these foods and dinner, we eat these foods. And it's like, Okay, cool. Like, eat whatever food you want anytime. Eat some eggs at night. It's yeah, good. Exactly. I mean, sometimes that's because like it doesn't matter because <laughs> you can just eat whatever you want anytime you want. There's no that's the question. Everything mindset is like, why do we have to eat these certain foods at these certain times? There's no reason. Yes, exactly. No reason whatsoever. And uh, sometimes it just it's a good way to mix up your day and make yourself happy. Like I know, like whenever I the first time I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna eat some ice cream during lunch with coffee. I was like instantly happier. Like I was just like, I don't know. It just like boosted my mood and yeah. just, it felt good. It felt right. But it's against um, the norm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so definitely like my views on nutrition, it's, I almost lo look at it in levels as in like, if you're just getting started in the fitness, you don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, but you can definitely still work in fitting your, the foods you enjoy most and still build like a body you're proud of, yeah. you know, lose fat, gain muscle, whatever you want to. But then I think it is still beneficial. Like after you have the ball rolling, to look into the quality of the food you're eating because yeah. if you're eating like the processed foods, even though it like fits your macros, that's still not doing anything good for your overall exactly, health. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like doing the levels to like get the ball rolling because then I feel like as you get more and more levels, you get better. You almost get pulled to like, what's the next level? What's the next level? And then how can you just keep improving your life in a sense? So it's like, I didn't necessarily start like that. Like I was eating a ton of like, I guess not that, you know, I was eating like a lot of packaged foods and stuff yeah. like that. Exactly, and, uh, yeah. and then it's like, okay, well, if I still want to fit treats into my diet, like what is the more higher quality, more beneficial thing? And like hogging that's ice cream, this has like yep. your, you know, ingredients and stuff like that. Good so, chocolate. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Chocolate's another big thing too. Oh, some good I, chocolate. I crossed my mind, but chocolate. Yes. That's a good yeah. one. Um, I feel what's, um, a couple of my favorite green and blacks. I think they just updated their yeah. ingredients, so but no yeah, so the, the cocoa butter, cane sugar, uh, the cocoa liquor yeah. and, but that's it and it, i think that tastes better too than like a Hershey. oh yeah you yeah know? real easy ingredients to pay attention to so okay so we just broke down the nutrition like the more health style of what you're doing mm -hmm. what about sleep because i know you're on a different sleep schedule than most people do and that's one of the uh oh of the big i'm so glad you brought this up oh man so yeah lately i i don't know why i get so excited about this but i basically been messing around with the siesta sleep schedule um basically um Typically, I think this started like back whenever the uh, industrial revolution was like blowing up all that stuff, you know, people in America were working harder, longer hours, which then kind of developed like a monophasic sleep schedule where it's your typical seven or eight hours throughout the night and that's it. But um, so like over in other European countries like Spain, they pretty much have like the siesta schedule where you're sleeping for a good part of the, of the night, like six hours, five or six hours, and then you have a nap in the afternoon. Um, there's definitely a bunch of different variations of like the polyphasic sleep like uberman like yeah what is a, a nap it's like so every 20 minutes yeah well that's six 20 minute naps throughout the day yeah yeah, yeah. which it's is crazy. definitely not a way to like live your life because if you do that and you miss one 20 minute nap i bet like everything is like off. yeah <laughs> so um so yeah the uh the siesta sleep schedule is basically um a six hour core sleep and a 90 minute nap in the afternoon and i've been playing around with different times on when it would feel best and right now i've been liking going to sleep <clears throat> at midnight i found it works best like if i'm getting in the bed at like 11 45 yeah. p.m yeah. to kind of wind down or do some stretching before and then hot in bed by midnight and then i'll wake up at six in the morning uh do some tony robbins priming meditation and all that yeah. but I'll, I'll dive into maybe if we want to talk about morning routines or something like that in a little bit yeah. but um and then wake up at 6 a.m and then around 8, 2 p.m., I will, actually, uh, yesterday, 
funny enough, I did some stretching, a little bit of yoga right before that nap, and that helped oh, really? me get better. That that helped me get a better nap because sometimes, nice. like, yeah, building the skill of like it took me a little bit to get like good at napping because some odd like it's almost a skill you have to build. It is a skill. Yeah, yeah. it really is. It's crazy. So. I found like this one 90 minute sleep cycle with the different brain waves and binaural beats, uh, 90 minutes. So I, I put the headphones in and then uh, do a 90 minute nap from 2 PM until 3:30 PM. And then like, that's also nice because it's not too late. You can wake up and have like a meal and have like some more coffee again. It's yeah. almost a really, I think the benefit of that and why I've really been liking it, it almost feels like you have two days in one. <laughs> yeah. You, get, you wake up at 6 AM, you can be super productive, you know, have a nice lunch and then kind of wind down. And whenever you start to hit that like afternoon wall, yeah, you can take a nap and almost recover because usually like people push through that with like more caffeine or something like that. And I feel like I want to almost maximize my time and maximize my brain power. But I think humans are very good at draining their batteries, but they're yes. not at recharging their batteries. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So it's like that siesta, that nap within the day, whenever you actually have it planned in your schedule or it has been working wonders with like my productivity and focus on work. So it's like, whenever I take that nap or, you know, I usually like to do a lot of my writing like in the first chunk of the day or like some kind of more uh, like heavier focus task. And then like some smaller stuff would wind down. My brain's usually just getting right in tune to kind of die down, take that nap. And then whenever I wake up, have a nice meal, coffee again, and I have better focus and then go. So you're the using time. two of these then? What's one that? One for a pre-siesta and one post-siesta? Two of the productivity <laughs> planners? <laughs> That'll be two in sense, but I don't know where mine is right now. Oh, here it is. I was going to say I'm not too productive. I can't even find my journal. But yeah, <laughs> these, are, these are, I've been uh, changing the game lately. I really yeah. like this. I'm still only like, like just getting started, but uh, yeah. our buddy Carter Good he definitely turned me on to that, turned us on too, because uh, yeah. it, it just it's a really good way to just like know what you're doing in the day. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could transition into the daily routine then. Mm -hmm. How's your uh, your morning, and then just it flow. So you got workout something like that. You have or stretching and yoga. You have the uh, midday siesta, getting mm -hmm. up. Uh, relatively early, six or seven, and then yeah. what happens yeah, next? Yeah. yeah, it's definitely, yeah, getting into it, I found, like, being a little, like, strict on the times helped me yeah. got, get into that routine. But, yeah, like, like 10 minutes or so off, it's it's not, like, a big deal. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah on a typical, like, typical workout day, definitely, um, lately, it's been looking, I'll wake up, 6 a.m. Um, I know you just made a video on this of Tony Robbins priming. Oh, yeah. Been loving that because – the I still feel like this is it's definitely related to health because the state you're in is huge and you can actually like just your breathing can just impact your state you can change up your state tremendously totally that Tony Robbins prime breathing it like no matter if I wake up feeling tired if I'm like in like a, a weird mood or anything like that that literally sets the course for my day because you know you hit the breathing you change your state um, you can yeah. focus on gratitude and focus on what you're about to accomplish in that day. And um, I also like to, as soon as I end that, I have some affirmations uh, like written down that I like to recite. And then um, you also did like pretty much the same exact um, warm up yeah. routine of the body that I also do like warming up the wrist, yeah. uh, the yep. knee, ankles, the spine, all that stuff, even the face. Um, do a little bit of the dry brushing with yeah. like, a, like a harder bristle brush to kind of, you know, uh, flush yeah. out the leg and all that stuff too. I haven't talked yeah. about that, but soon I'll be making oh, yes. that soon. Yeah. It, for some reason, I feel like that's definitely probably helping your like skin elasticity. Yeah. Because you almost like kind of almost get goosebumps. Yeah. Like it almost like it almost could even help like you know keep your face looking younger. Some totally. weird kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe that that just that's a weird idea. Maybe a weird thought that I had, but I definitely like doing the dry brushing for sure. Um, and then shower, and then I move into making my coffee or sometimes tea. I'm loving or you turn me on to herba mate. Yeah. That, like that is amazing because usually I was like, oh, like I like tea. But I, I never wanted to drink it first in the morning because I was like, oh, I kind of would want like a little bit more caffeine. But Urban exactly. Monster has like exactly like this has all of it. Caffeine, plus more other nutrients and stuff. So, um, which I need to order some more, by the way. Yeah. I actually didn't even order any, but I need to get some because I like it's that. Um, one. Yeah. That mm -hmm. organic one online. I'll link it below. But that's oh, a good yeah. one. Um, oh, sweet. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, then I think I was about to, I don't want to lose my train of thought. Yeah. I, I got excited and I start going on like a ramble. But um, then after some, like, oh, like a typical workout, um, been into rock climbing a lot recently. Oh, yeah. I know, yeah, we've been really enjoying that because uh, it's almost, it's a great workout. And I know like not to kind of like go back to the vanity things. I always, 
always like making jokes like i just wanted bigger biceps and stuff like that yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. Rock climbing has, hey, it's most people's thing at the beginning yeah exactly um definitely over that now but rock climbing has helped my back and bicep development oh dude yeah like, yeah exactly but more importantly it's literally a, like a puzzle like you're solving puzzles especially more like the bouldering not yeah. necessarily like the the scone straight up a, a high tower with like a belay but um just bouldering has it's like it doesn't feel like you're working out because you're solving a puzzle yeah it's, it's like a high risk puzzle yeah <laughs> yeah it's a very high risk puzzle yeah, how you're doing like, like learning like different ways like oh i didn't know i could move my leg like that to get to this other obstacle and things like that and um it, it's fun and I've been really enjoying that lately. So I'll, I'll boulder for like about like an hour, hour and a half. I know it, it definitely helps. Like whenever we boulder, like for mm -hmm. two hours, your hands get warmed up and everything. Yeah. But for like an hour, hour and a half. And then um, been playing around a lot on the gymnastics rings. Nice. It's been awesome. And uh, just doing more like practicing like some handstands, and, like uh, hand balancing movements and stuff like that. And then like lastly, funny enough, I've been finishing off with the weights on like nice. the main, like, core compound exercises. Um, but still, like rock climbing and movement have completely changed the game. So it's almost like you're building that, like just basic movements or building your foundation of your body. You know, without yeah. those, it's hard to build upon that. And like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's realistic that. moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, we're just going back to what we should have started with. So. Exactly. Like people almost have trouble sitting in like a basic squat. Yes. Yeah after some work i'll have to it, it, obviously we can't show this on the podcast or anything right now but yeah. I, li I like to i feel like i have some pretty good squat mobility <laughs> you can send me that picture a picture you're doing i'll make it a thumbnail of the oh podcast. <laughs> something like that yeah but um that even just like being able to rest in the squat for like 10 or 15 minutes has like completely changed the game oh, and yeah. has helped like my leg strength too and everything like that yeah. um so okay then how do you invest in yourself how do I invest in myself? I think the biggest thing would probably be meditation. Yeah. Because like life can throw so many different things at you every single day. There's going to be, you know, some problems, uh, new challenges you have to overcome. And even just like finding those own personal demons and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like getting over those little weird insecurities or getting over the ego and stuff like that, that meditation has completely changed the game for me to like get over it myself in that way and to, you know, almost reflect on the day, um, look into the future and things of that nature and almost just to quiet my mind because yeah. um, it's so easy to go. Like you, if you have a bad day, it's so easy to go in that downward spiral of thoughts and just like create like all these other negative things that you, you shouldn't even be worrying yeah. about, you know, or even like the simple, like if you're stressing over like some small things and, um, you, you wouldn't be worrying about those things in the next day or two or even the week. It's like, yeah. why are you worrying about those things? So it's like meditation to help like completely calm the mind and, you know, release all thoughts. Um, and just like really get my head right and, uh, learn more about myself and everything like that. Oh. So I definitely recommend some form of meditation, even if it's like a simple five or 10 minute, uh, headspace thing or something like yeah. that. Dude, headspace is a great app for it, mm -hmm. especially for beginners. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. Like, uh, oh yeah, they have like a, a 10 day, like yeah. 10 a day. It's Take like, 10. yeah, it's like if you, if you don't have 10 minutes in the morning, just to focus on that, to yeah. set your day up to be even like greater then maybe you should rethink like kind of the morning and stuff exactly. like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely meditation has helped nice. in so many, so many, every, every aspect of life. Yeah. So Seriously. Yeah. And also like reading too on like yeah. the side note, basically. <laughs> Cause it's like, <laughs> I, I love, I love your way of like saying like, because going growing up in school like the, we could probably say this for like another podcast yeah dude we could do a whole one on reading <laughs> yeah exactly because i was it's never i got i got turned off from reading from school because it was always like these made up weird stories or like these weird yeah. reading passages that have, and, and then i have to like take a quiz right after on like whatever so i would always just skip the reading find look at the questions go back find the answers and then yeah. get by like that so it really turned me off from reading so it was like um whenever you said like what problem do you have find yeah. a book that fixes that problem read it fix your problem and then you'll be hooked and that's exactly. literally what helped me do it i was like reading is the best thing ever yeah and it's also it's it's such um i believe tim ferris said this uh, correct me if i'm wrong but like reading a book is like the biggest i don't want to say it wasn't him okay but i know what you're saying it's the uh it's the biggest theft that a man can have because you can steal 
someone's whole lifetime through reading the one book they worked on. Basically. It's like they, yes, they, they literally they live their entire life to get these lessons, and you can literally read those within like. I mean, I still like the, you can read pretty fast, but it takes me a little bit of a while. Like if I, I can go, but basically a week, if I can crush a book in a week or like yeah. make a little bit under a week, that's still a lot, lot, lot shorter than a whole entire life. Yeah, exactly. Read that book. So like reading, but like meditation first to get my mind right, all that good stuff. And then reading is obviously like now it's. Hell yeah. Yes. So then, uh, so then what higher leverage skills you use throughout the day or use most commonly? Hmm. I think I want to say the filter of quality versus quantity. Yeah. Because I'm I'm definitely a big I really focus on presentation of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, like how it looks, how it comes across and things of that nature, uh, especially like even how I'm communicating, how I'm speaking. Uh, it's kind of related to quality versus quantity, but it's like also really it's like the food. It's like if I yeah. want to eat ice cream, I want to eat um, a better ice cream that I know <clears throat> is going to support my health. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um or if it's like uh maybe just on like a personal personal preference on like better coffee. Cause you know, if I'm enjoying like a better cup of coffee, like Maxwell house compared to a pour over, yeah. like I know I'm going to enjoy that coffee more. I'll feel better. My mood will be improved and um, it will help me with my day. So definitely I think a more higher level skill is like quality versus quantity, because I know it also keeps me like curious about like living the best life. You know, like if you can, you can continually like, get better and better and learn more about everything in life that just expands your horizons in so oh, many ways totally. because I feel like that o- almost relates to like how whenever we first met how green I was and like I didn't have any experience it was like I was sheltered under a rock and stuff like that yeah. and just like having now it's like like whenever you turn me on like I didn't even know what a v60 pour over was for coffee and all yeah. that stuff but every little all those little things add up and like finding the quality in all of life i think it just help you live a better oh, dude. life changes everything yeah. yeah you can really milk the experiences out of mm-hmm. life i think it's another thing another can i add another one yeah 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 <laughs> um if it, something recently um that i really been trying to think about if it's the whole and i i do forget like who said this first so maybe we can look it up like but yeah. if it's not the quote or the filter if it's not a hell yes it's a hell no yeah I don't and, know how it's said it. Or it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like, it really helps. If you're not, if you don't rate it a 10, and if you rate it anything less, just maybe discard it and find something you truly enjoy. Yes. Because that's going to help filter what you truly um, want to do with your life. Because if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then why would you do it in the first place? Of course, like we have those commitments and you have to honor those, like with your, whatever feels yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Integrity. yeah. But it's like, if it's something that you know you could be doing something better and it's okay if you don't do that thing and you're not rating it like, you know, that 10 on the scale, then like, don't do it. You know, find yeah, something else exactly. that you feel that you're fully pulled towards and that you can have like live Which, a, better day and a better life. And that plays into the quality aspect of life too. The more you do those hell yeses, the more you're going to put effort into it, make it quality. Yes. 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 Exactly. So okay. then... So the last fundamental is to question everything and what's something that you've been questioning lately that's just in the mainstream world. <laughs> um, all of life. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think it's definitely a big realization that I had recently and it's about the rules of life. These set rules that maybe people limit themselves with mm-hmm. as in, like, oh, like, I don't know if I can go start that business or I don't know if I can go do this thing because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to or yeah. something of that nature. So it's like almost, I feel this comes from, for some odd reason, I always had like the night, you know, I, I talked to you about like my nightmares are going about the yeah, college yeah, yeah. or something like that for some reason. I don't know. I'm good now. I haven't been having those. But really, I think this the, is best described with school you almost you're in an ecosystem for like all your life from basically first grade all the way up to college you're following this set structure as in you know you have this syllabus every single month and you get tested on it and then some one teacher gives you a letter grade and whenever you end school all of a sudden that rule book is gone and like literally like you have to come up with your own set of rules how how you want to live your life you have to learn new people skills because what may have worked for you in school 
may not work for you in the real exactly. world. Exactly. And most it, likely will not. Yes, exactly. So it's like, I think questioning the rules or almost like doing the whole um, do and then ask for forgiveness later because yes. you shouldn't let anything, if you have some idea, if you have some, whatever you want to accomplish, whether it is in health and fitness, yeah, I think related to this podcast, if you want have a health and fitness goal and you're afraid of, you know, pursuing it because you're afraid of what others think, what other, you know, the yeah. judgment that might be placed on by society, it's like, you have to just like, there are no rules, right? <laughs> there aren't. There so really it's like, aren't. No yeah, question, I don't want to like use what you said, like questioning everything, but it's like, you're literally, you can come up with your own set of rules and how you want to live your life. So I think just questioning things that I thought, like, oh, I, I don't know if I can do that. Well, question it and yeah. like don't abide yeah. by those rules and just go for it. So exactly. I think, yeah, I think that about sums it all up. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh, of course. And, uh, of course. It's awesome. We'll do another one of these soon, maybe about reading or something. Yeah, because reading is a big one. That that's they, they completely changed the game. But yeah, I think we almost this podcast almost like we're planting seeds for all these different other yeah. topics, and it's going to be good. So, so uh, real quick before you sign off, where can people find you? Find me, uh, trentmccloskey dot com. That's T R E N T M C C L O S K E Y. I know a lot of people forget the E or they think it's a U, but <laughs> um, definitely that's my website, uh, Instagram handle Trent underscore McCloskey. And then the rest, I think all social medias are just Trent McCloskey. Awesome. Um, so yeah, sweet. Thank you. Awesome, man. Yeah. Sweet.